Hey what's up guys, welcome to another video on my channel. Today is going to be an editing tutorial on how to do extreme slow-mo. I see a lot of I see a lot of requests to me specifically and on other people's videos asking how to do specific like extreme slow-mo, even if you do not have like a thousand FPS, and I'm going to be showing you how to do that in today's video. I'm also gonna be I'm also thinking about starting a full editing series where I pretty much go through a ton of effects and possibly daily uploads. But that all depends on how well this video does. If you want a full series of editing tutorials, dropping a like could mean the difference between that or missing out. Alright, now let's just get started in the video. So I have a really, like, I have a bad clip and the reason for that is I have not played this game in a little, a little over two weeks now. And that is because I have not had good enough internet to do so. I would like lag a ton and it's kind of unplayable. So this is going to be a clip from a couple months ago. So this is going to be the clip without the music. So yeah, it's, it's nothing really good. All I did is kind of like sit the cone through the wall, edit the wall, then cone, and 180. It's not horrible, but like it was a couple months ago, I wasn't good at the game, so. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is sync up your clip with your song, or not even necessarily sync up, but mark the shots. So to mark your shot on a clip, a lot of people, what they'll do is find the point of shot on the gun which is essentially when the red, uh, when the orange marks appear. That's not necessarily how you mark them. Find the mark and then go one, two, three, four, five frames ahead. And pretty much this is going to find like the actual point of the shot. So now that you have your shot marks, just find the drop on your song. It doesn't matter what song you're using, just find a certain point in the song. So just go ahead and listen to that and then mark whenever the drop comes. Line uh, your stuff up with that and it's going to look pretty good but for extreme slow-mo i'm thinking that we could start to slow the clip as soon as my shotgun pulls out and it looks like this is actually going to be a very good point so now we actually get to how to do the slow motion so for the software i'm using which is premiere pro uh there's a feature where you go speed and duration you can go to like 50 percent 40 percent like the normal stuff and i recorded this at 60 fps and then I can actually go up in the corner of my screen up here to see how many frames I had to do math and everything. And in my island, but there's no need to do that because we already know if we divide 240 by 10, we get 24 frames, which is around 30. It's still going to look pretty choppy. So if we do 10, you can see it looks really choppy, but it's still like, it's still able to be watched. And then 20% would look okay once it's all rendered out. But we don't want it to look choppy whatsoever, we want it to be super smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and then cut the part where I wanted, which is right here. Sorry, right here. And what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, cut this part. And then we're going to go up here, we want the slow motion to be. And then stop. Cut again, and then just delete the audio within that time frame. And go ahead and then move your clip over to the edge. And now here's the special trick. So let's say I wanted this to be on 10% speed. You want to change this setting at the bottom right here from frame sampling to optical flow. And that's going to automatically generate some frame gaps to make it look like it's consistent. And you're going to see that it needs to be rendered here. And this is also going to set apart. So let me just go ahead and render this and I will get back to you once that's done. But you can also see how it's like a little bit, you know, like distorted like right here that's going to be the effect but in my opinion it does not look bad like it's, it's actually a pretty sick effect so if you want to use this then that's pretty good and what this does is it it's a mix of dissolving and distortion between the different frames and that's what optical flow does so really you should only have around 20 to 45 milliseconds of slow time in your clip any more than that and it looks really stretched out because with video editing, if you want to have good flow, you don't want the viewer to be able to process every effect that's going on. Otherwise, that kind of ruins the entire purpose of editing. So let's go back to what I had originally. Now that I've now that I've experimented with how long my thing should be, I know that I should start my slow-mo here once the brick has already gone down, and that'll make the distortion effect a little bit less visible. I can go five frames ahead, cut the audio and the video, and then go ahead and then drag out my thing there. Change to optical flow 
and then let's go for 15% to make it a little bit less to make it a little bit less distorted. We'll go ahead and press OK. I just rendered it. It took around half a second. And then once it's rendered, it should look a little better. And you can see there's significantly less distortion once it's a smaller clip. But if it's not rendered, it will look really choppy, so make sure you do render it first. And then if you want it to match your uh, B drop, just go ahead and then cut this right here. And there are two methods of following it up to the B drop. And one is going to be cutting until your shotgun actually shoots, adding a bit of glow and adjustment layer on top of that. And I will show you how that looks, and then I'm going to show you the other method as well. So method one is going to be creating an adjustment layer. You can have this whatever frames you want. 1920 by 1080 is going to be for the best effect. Drag this on, make it around 12 frames. And that's going to be 12. Cut it, delete the rest. And we want to go ahead and add in a Lumetri color effect. And just go to your effects panel and type in Lumetri color. And that'll pop up there, just drag it on. For me, I have my panel on the side. Go to basic correction, keyframe exposure or brightness. Go six frames ahead, time it to four, and then go one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is, and then just put it down back to zero. And that's going to create a little glow effect. Now go to your adjustment layer, go six frames in. Put a marker on it and then drag the center on top of this, which is going to create a somewhat seamless thing and a little bit of a glow effect as as the clips overlap. And you can see that lo that looks all right so far. And once I go ahead and then add certain effects like RSMB, for an example, I can just go ahead and then drag this on to my clips. I'm going to go ahead and render it and then I'll show you guys what it looks like after this has been rendered with some light RSMB. Okay, so I just finished rendering and I'm not sure if my recording software is able to pick up the RSMB, but here we go. And you can see that there's like a little bit of blur, like if you pause frame, like right here, there's some blur, which is just my simple RSMB effect. But once I add certain other things like color grading, color correction, and ton of stuff, that'll look really clean. And that's going to be our first method of changing this. The second method is going to be using time remapping, which is also very basic. And let's just find where our clip cuts off. So that looks like right here. And I got it first try. So we just go ahead and then keep dragging this. And we want to have a very smooth accelerating effect. So what we can do right here is go to our we can click right here, time remapping and then speed. And then I can keyframe that. Go 10 frames ahead and then keyframe again. And then go ahead and then change this to like 30, 45, depending on your frames. If you have like 500 frames, you can go ahead, speed it up. But for me, I can change it to this and it'd look all right. And then drag this out right here and then you're going to want to just touch these like little arrows and that's going to make a nice smooth curve for your time remapping. And you can see how it like slowly accelerates into normal speed. I found that it looks really nice if you actually skip like the shot where it actually kills and you go to a clear shot where you have like the person already eliminated. So you can go right here and then just delete the entire shot altogether and as long as you had a shotgun effect, like a sound effect of the shotgun, it implies that you killed him and it actually looks really clean. I'm just gonna go ahead and quick, I'm gonna add a quick BCC glow transition, which is a plugin that I have. And then I'm going to go ahead and then add my shotgun sound effect. And I have my shotgun fallout and my gold sound effect right here, my gold pump sound. So I need to find the point where the sound effect actually happens, and that is right here. So I just go ahead and then cut, and then I bring this back here. And very important that you get the timing down, you want to time this right here where the transition happens. So you can see the sound effect starts right when it goes there. And that's my shotgun pullout sound. 
we don't need to be that loud, but I can go probably around minus 7. Now there is a problem right here. You can see that my beat drop on my song and the shotgun shot on my clips do not fully line up. Now there's a really easy fix to that. Just go to the beginning of your timeline and feel free to cut off a little bit of footage that you do not need. If it's a vital part of the clip, you can take a different approach, but for me, that part was not really needed. So I can just go ahead and then drag this onto here and wait until my all my lines sync up. And then, like I said before, drag this over here to where the to where the pullout sound matches with the slow mo, and then your shotgun shot will match with the points. And then I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like rendered in just a second here. All right, that just finished rendering, and I can go ahead and then show you guys what that looks like. And that is what that looks like with just one basic effect on it. And you can already see it's a dramatic improvement from most of the montages on YouTube. And I'm going to add a, just a couple other effects and show you what a difference the slow-mo makes and what a valuable effect it is compared to just having no effect there at all. Alrighty, so I just finished adding a couple of effects on here. I just added some color correction. Uh, and then I added a little bit of a build up here. I can already see in the comments you guys are like, this build up is the entirety of this thing. Like there's there's no slow-mo involved. This effect right here is only possible with this specific type of slow-mo. So it wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't done it like this anyways. So here's the final result of what I have for you guys today. Site you thought you really think that today's tutorial is going to be on slow motion and then I don't add a slow motion end clip to this <sighs> Sad, okay, so here is the actual end result I hope you guys enjoyed that little tutorial on how to do the slow-mo effect I'm aware in the end result that I used a couple other effects, but I just wanted to show you what that can look like in the end result of a montage because I know that a lot of other editing tutorial YouTubers do not actually show that. I just figured that it'd be useful for you guys to see what that would look like in an actual end result. And I also showed how to do the effect on its own, so I think that that was enough to justify putting other effects in. If this tutorial helped you guys in any way, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel so I can hit my goal of 5k by the end of this year. And who knows, if this video gets 30 likes, I might do a video on color correction or even how to do this wonderful build-up effect. And pretty much that is just how to do the ultra slow-mo effect, even if you're not recording at 1000 FPS. And I will see you guys in my next video.